So the customer brings over these steel, not steel, let's call them metal boxes. And um, there's some sort of casting. So they're cast iron, the worst, one of the worst cast irons I've seen in a long time. It doesn't want to weld to save your life. Still, key is cleaning it up, so I'm getting a little sandblaster, spot blaster gun out there. Have some glass bead abrasive and uh, giving those a good once over. I did a spark test on it already and the sparks are absolutely dark, dark, dark and just very few of them out there. So we're pretty sure it's cast iron. We're using some cast iron specialty rod and um, the goal is one has four holes, the other one has five holes. When we're done, customer only wants two holes on every box. Locations are marked. So I'm sandblasting inside, outside, wherever I don't need um, the holes so that I can put a, a circle, quarter inch thick plug on there that I've previously cut out on the CNC table. By the way, those little spot blaster guns are the absolute best thing to clean up a lot of things. I clean up castings, I clean up aluminum fuel tanks I'm welding, I'm cleaning everything up. You don't need a huge air compressor, you don't need a ton of sand. All you do is hold them at it and blast about half inch left and half inch right up where you want to weld. The material is nice and clean, perfect even for TIG welding. up myself feels like a beach party at night you have sand like everywhere just you had less fun but you made more money so the shower will hopefully take off the rest clean up the forklift and good to go So here you can see that the one plug, you can't really see it, but take my word for it. One of the plugs I tried with some silicon bronze on the Pro Pulse 200 and I did not preheat the casting and it didn't really turn out in my favor. Now I broke out the Inverarc 200 and um, I, bought, I took some cast iron specialty rods that are designed to weld cast iron or cast iron to mild steel. And I'm using that with pulse and it works pretty well. Look right here, I put a sliding amperage controller on there, which allows me to adjust the amperage while I am welding on the machine. And that works out really well for cast iron. I can strike the rod at a higher amperage and as material heats up and wants less heat in there, I can adjust the heat with a thumb on that slider I can change the amperage while I'm welding. It works really good for cast iron and it works even better on aluminum.
So of course this is fast forward, I'm stepping a little bit on it, nobody wants to see me weld this for like 5 minutes. The pulse keeps it cool, I never preheated the casting, it's a lot of casting to preheat this to temperature. If you preheat it, then you need to post heat it, then you need to either wear it in sand or wrap it in ceramic blankets to let it cool down. So I picked uh, welding it cold, I started cold, the pulse kept it cold and um, it all worked pretty good. I welded it on the outside and now I'm flipping the casting over and then I'm going to do the same thing on the inside and um, the welds look presentable considering it's cast iron. Um, it's holding up just fine. It's just gotten buried in the ground. This electrical connector box, there will never be any load on it or anything. And even for water tightness, it could be siliconed if it needed to, but I actually put some water in it and checked it was leak tight. So, um, operation successful. Yeah, yeah, I know. Don't beat the daylights out of it, rake it. So here, watch this. There, I'm raking it. See how the chips come off? So cleaning it up a little bit, looking what we have, putting another pass on it where it's needed, and then a little bit chipping wire brushing, and that's about all she wrote. <laughs> 